Hey everyone, I'm Ari Jardarian and today we have a special guest, John Donaldson. Uh, John has volunteered to uh, use his house kind of as a guinea pig. We're going to add an iPad, um, I guess you call it a docking station, built into his wall. Uh, where, what is, where'd you get this from? This is uh, from iPadWallBracket.com and it's uh, very uh, economical, it's only about $99 and compared to the other the other units that I looked at. And so, um, yeah, we're gonna mount this inside the wall today. And so, uh, what John's decided to do, rather than run power to the wall, he's gonna use um, Ethernet, uh, I guess it's a USB adapter over Ethernet. So, he, so he's running Ethernet from uh, the installation all the way back to where his Macintosh is. And uh, this will be the device. How much did these cost? Um, those things are about $30. Uh, for the for the pair. pair? Yeah. And it runs power over this as well, It runs right? power and, uh, yeah, I can sync it to my Mac and run power over, power over Ethernet up to 100, 150 feet. Uh, so that's a great way. And then that'll keep it in sync. Now, of course, iOS 5 is coming out in the fall, which will allow you to keep it in sync via uh, Wi-Fi. But in the meantime, John will be able to do that. Uh, how much does this device cost? The the the, the dock, the the bracket. This was ninety nine dollars. Oh, you and you already said that, huh? Yes, I did. <laughs> okay, all right. So uh, we'll take it. It's good. What, what do I think it's going to take a couple hours, and we'll kind of distill it down to a few minutes so you can see the steps it takes to uh, to do this. And then once it's in place, we'll kind of do a demo of his home automation uh, package. I uh, use Insteon, correct? Correct. And uh, he also has uh, some uh, audio zones with his uh, airport expresses, so we'll uh, kind of put it through its paces. And then once we got it working here, then I'll go do it at my place. All right, so while John's uh, making measurements, first thing uh, you can do is got to find a place to put it. And John, you've chosen to put this, it's kind of your kitchen dining area. Yeah, this is a central location of my house, so I can easily access this thing and I'll be able to um, Kind of display some pictures on it when it's not being a controller and it's going to just be the central controller for my whole house so um so you're marking everything up now but you got to make the cut into the drywall yeah i'm just kind of i want it centered with this light switch so i kind of drew a center one all right so john you you've marked out the uh where you're going to cut on the wall now, now this uh bracket is initially intended just to be uh mounted on the wall yeah, not it's a, it's a surface wall mount it's a surface mount type bracket but we, we, I decided I kind of wanted something to be flush mount. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the hole out. We're going to mount it inside and then drew, and, and then connect it to the studs inside. We're going to have to add a piece of wood on this side, obviously, because there's no other way to, to, to secure it so that it doesn't wobble. Um, so, yeah, we're going to try this and see how it works. Okay. Now the fun part, cutting walls. <laughs> so first I'm going to drill some holes. Um, there's obviously studs here, so I don't think I can drill here, but I'm going to drill on this side. And then I'm going to attempt to drill there and see because so I'm going to just drill a pilot hole here. All right, so as we cut through, we found that there was a stud back there. And the yep. nice thing is, so we don't have to add any, build out any wood to screw the uh, the bracket down. So we're good to go as soon as we remove the drywall. Yeah, but so we have a stud here and a stud here. So this is a perfect, perfect insulation. The only thing we careful about, we know we have some power lines uh, running behind there. So when you do something like this, make sure you, you are careful yeah. not to cut through those power lines. So John's pulled out his X-Acto knife and uh, and is a drywall saw, and we're just going at it very slowly. I got enough studs in here to mount a safe. All right. All right, so we got the uh, drywall cut out. We got lucky, there's plenty of studs in there that we can mount the bracket to. Um, so the next step is to actually Mount the bracket. All right, so we've got our hole cut, and this little guy should fit right in here nice and neatly now. And it does. But we do have a small challenge. Our studs don't quite line up with the holes here. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to drill a couple of holes here and a couple of holes here so that these will screw directly into my studs. And I'm going to go do that right now. All right, so we've drilled a hole, but also in the meantime, John, yeah, if you don't mind pulling that out, John also ran the uh, HD, the um, Ethernet cable. USB over uh, Cat5. This is a trip light unit, so it's just going to kind of hang right there. And we've already tested it. It's all working. 
And so um, we're just going to put this guy right up in here. Fits nice and snug. And we had to drill the extra holes, of course. So we noticed that uh, the screws, um, uh, although they're flush, uh, they may come in contact with the back of the iPad. So John's placing some rubber foam stops, I guess, on top of the, uh, the screws. And that'll also help maybe make for a, a, tighter, um, a tighter placement of the iPad. All right, so the moment we've been waiting for, right, John? Yep. Actually, we're only about uh, two and a half hours into this. It didn't take that long. So we're gonna go ahead and plug this guy in. Push our cable in there. He is charging. Oh my goodness. Look at that. Now, there was a set screw that was right here. And um, obviously if you flush mount this unit, you're not going to be able to get to the set screw, which actually keeps the top on. So what we did is we pulled the set screw out and I took a couple of cabinet magnets and I blued them to the back of this so that they'll they'll stick right to the back of this unit. So this will provide a nice fit. And there we are. All right, so here's the final product. We've got the iPad uh, put in the wall and we've got the bracket around it. And John, why don't you take us for a tour of what you got on your iPad, uh, your home control, your music, and some pictures. All right, so the first application I have on here um, that I really like, this is the whole reason for this, is the Indigo Touch application. It connects back to my Indigo um, server, which controls my Insteon, um, control my lights and uh, garage door, and my thermostat. Um, and so right now I've got a little floor map set up of my house, floor plan. And from this we can see that the garage door is currently open. If I touch this little button here, it takes a few seconds, but it's it's closed in the garage right now. Um, the other thing uh, is we've got lights here, so I can blow this up a little bit. And you can see these lights are on. Just by touching those, you'll notice they go off. And I can also touch this thing here and slowly increment the... can't tell on here, but it changes the brightness in my living room. Um, and of course, here's my kitchen area, and you'll notice the lights are on in the kitchen. If I just touch each one of those, like under counter lights, all those go off. Um, and of course in my office, um, this is my office area, I've got a couple of icons here. One is for the UPS, uh, it monitors um, my UPS. So if my UPS power goes out, this will turn red, it sends me an email. The other thing is it kind of monitors when I'm home. So I have scripts that basically are waiting for me to get home. And so when I'm not home, um, my iPhone is with me obviously, and the, the system through Bluetooth doesn't know, can't detect me. So this icon will turn red and then when I get home in the afternoon certain things will alert me and let me know what needs to be around here. So John you do that you have a Bluetooth that's how you sense whether you're here or not? Right. Okay so you connect to your computer? Yeah it's a, there's a little application on my Mac called Proximity. I got gotcha. you and then and you so have a I script just, that... Yeah there's a script that runs okay. and it checks to see if I'm home every 30 seconds. Uh, when I am home there are certain messages that will be queued up it'll start texting me letting me know things around the house need my attention. And so, um, also for like when we're on vacation, I have a vacation mode. The minute I get home, the vacation mode automatically turns off because of the Bluetooth um, proximity thing. So that's the home automation. Um, the next thing we have on here is uh, iTunes Remote. And so I can scroll through all my music here. And uh, I can pick a song here, shuffle it. Click the speaker system. I have the dining room. I'll turn the dining room on here where we're at. And we'll turn the volume up a little bit. So we have music. And, and so you can put can, the album art on. And touching this right here. My touch isn't real good today. There okay. you go. Now we're Lionel Richie. <laughs> That's kind of cool. You got the album art on there. It'd be nice yeah. if. It would have some sort of like a collage, but maybe Apple will do something like that in the future. And then so, uh, while you have your music serenading, you can also put up pictures from what I understand. Correct? So we have a little application called Alive Albums here. And I click that, and that's tied, in, tied, in, tied into my Facebook applications. And, uh, 
or cats. So I'd like to uh, once again thank John Donaldson for allowing us into his home and uh, recording what he did with uh, turning that iPad into a, uh, a controller for his, uh, for his home. Uh, one thing I do want to uh, make mention of, John called up uh, later on that evening and uh, informed me that the power was not enough to charge the, uh, the iPad. So uh, he had it uh, plugged into a, um, a USB port that didn't produce enough, uh, didn't have enough uh, current. So it was like a trickle charge. Um, so when the screen is off, it was charging very slowly. He's going to look into some other options. One of the things I'm going to do a little bit differently than John, so I'm going to take uh, this 15 foot USB extension cable and uh, connect this up to the iPad and then run that to a, a power plug. Uh, one of them I saw online. It's a regular power plug, but it has two USB adapters um, built right in two USB ports. It's a 2.1 um, amps uh, or uh, yeah, 2.1 amps of power. So that should be plenty to charge your iPad and run it and actually charge it while it's uh, while it's on. Uh, again, I am not going to go the route of the. Um, of the syncing via a connection the way John did, a physical connection. I'm uh, going to wait for iOS 5 to do that via Wi-Fi, but for the most part my iPad is not really used to house any um, uh, music or pictures or anything like that. It's going to stream those off of my computer, so I'm not so worried about the, uh, the keeping it in sync, and they will be dedicated um, uh, iPads for that only use. Uh, John mentioned the part of the reason why he added that magnet mechanism to his um, wall uh, wall mount was so that he could uh, rather quickly take it out and then take it on the road with uh, with them when they go on uh, trips or something. Uh, again, I also want to thank uh, iPadWallBracket.com uh, for supporting us. With uh, they provided us the brackets uh, for this demo. Thank you very much. If you want to check it out, ninety nine dollars for really. Uh, a solid bracket that you can put on the wall. Again, you don't have to do it the way we did where we put it into the wall. Um, $99 iPadWallBracket.com And also I'd like to remind listeners and viewers that uh, we do have a store. It's uh, at uh, htguys.com slash shop and your support is greatly appreciated. You can follow me on Twitter at HDTV Podcast and you can follow Braden at, uh, at Braden Russell. Uh, thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you soon. Thank <laughs> you.